Yeah, so welcome to Military Combat Network. In today's video, we're going to react to the British Paras training with our American Airborne. I am here joined by the one and only Combat Arms Channel from the US. Oh yeah, howdy, howdy. Welcome, mate. So it's called Defender of Europe 21. So I guess it's the Paras and then some army unit, which I'm guessing is going to be like 82nd doing some cool stuff. So yeah, this is pretty highly yeah. recommended on my channel. I don't know about yours, but... It'll be pretty cool to check out. Yeah, it's the first time I've heard of it. The quality already seems pretty legit. Yeah, it does. If it's anything like the Royal Marine videos, then it should be pretty good. Yeah, they've got some really good camera on men. I've noticed that. <laughs> yeah. An exercise <laughs> really good. like Swift Response 21 uh, is going to allow a paratrooper to really confirm to himself and everyone that's looking at him that he is truly ready for anything. That dude looks mean. <laughs> he does. <laughs> okay. I, I wonder what that means. Okay, On so... Own, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're seeing a lot already. So, I'm not airborne, and I don't think you're airborne either, so we're not going to be able to comment too much on, like, the aircraft no, and whatnot. No, not really. Yeah, I imagine that the U.S. guys are going to be jumping out of their aircraft, because I know airborne people like to do that a lot, just to get the other wings and stuff. Yeah. There we go. So we got some sniper dudes already, so maybe this is gonna be bigger than we think. Just bigger than normal yeah. airborne stuff. All right, there we go, some nice B-roll. Okay, Fort Bragg, so yeah, this is 80 seconds. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that dude driving around the base with no headgear on. Yeah, I know. That's actually true. It's a good point. I pick stuff like that up instantly. Yeah. From the past because of COVID. We've isolated for the required period. Plus, we've isolated when we got here as well. God damn. Do y'all have like hair regs? Because this dude's hair seems out of control. <laughs> yeah. So what, what's actually been happening in Britain, we've only just recently opened up again. Okay. So if they've actually just deployed on this exercise which they have oh. which meant all the hairdressers <laughs> okay. still shut over you gotcha that's funny okay yeah dude i've gotten tested like four <laughs> times that shit sucks we did get a positive of a covid test it's horrible um, i was because it's my first time coming to america <laughs> The code Ooh, test out here deep. was um, yeah yeah it was pretty tough right in the brain they stick it right up your nose um, compared to like back in England. <laughs> what do they do in England? <laughs> hey, the same thing you're seeing right there. Oh. That's the same thing that we're doing. Damn. <laughs> but not that deep. <laughs> yeah yeah they, they go for the, it. The weather is it, because it's so cold back home. It's more enjoyable training here because of the heat and <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I love that their camouflage just... though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got some little some PT going on here. <laughs> yeah. 80 second love their pull-ups. I know that. Airborne in general love doing their pull-ups. Acclimatizing to the weather, I think we've the first couple of days. Climatization, yeah, yeah. because obviously they have just come from the but cold climate. The right. And Fort Black, like where it's probably so mid-20s, 30s, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I like the PT uniform, though. It looks a lot better than our army crap. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I can't wait to go to America. I can't wait. <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I've worked with Americans a few times, but, is to test but you know, it just seems like everything seems cooler. I, 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 I was based in Germany at Grafenware, which is a US base, right. and everyone's just cutting around with Gatorades and stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> Shades on. Is that even, even, in rain, even in rain, they're wearing the uh, United yeah, yeah. States. Yeah, yeah. All the Americans are wearing shades, Gators, and it, all that. It's funny. That's just the way to do it. I guess it's like the culture. I don't know the weather. Yeah. The weather, especially here, this is in North Carolina. The weather can be super unpredictable, and even if it's like cloudy, sometimes it'll still be like super bright. So it's kind of weird. 
<laughs> I always wanted to try that, dude. I don't want to go airborne, but this would be fun to try. So the basic. It's something I never fancied. <laughs> yeah, it's quite I like my I knees. I never wanted to try it. I think yeah. It's quite similar to ours and how we run things. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll tell you a little story if you just pause. And yeah, yeah. Video a second. Um, so basically, I was attached. I, I, ITC Catrick, which is an infantry training school at Catrick. Okay. That's actually where they conduct um, para training. You know, so the people you're seeing there, they've done their P company, it's called. Right. Here in Catrick. I'm based in Catrick right now, but that was my last workplace there. So basically, what I used to do in the past is drive an ambulance or so, you know, to drive with them while they're conducting their P company training. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, what P company is. Uh, an X amount of different tests, and they're really, really hard tests. Right. Uh, and then basically, it's a pass or fail, you know. And my friend did it, and I was driving the ambulance, yeah. and he's he was part of P Company, and he collapsed on the bridge. And he's one of the fittest blokes, fittest men I've ever co come yeah. across. So it doesn't matter how fit you are, you know, you're gonna cream in. A lot I mean, of them do. I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of people do. Right. I've seen like a, some of the clips. I know like they do the uh, what is it called milling, where they just beat the crap out of each other for like a minute yeah. straight. Yeah, I mean, I don't. That's I kinda, part of it. I kind of like how they do all that stuff. I mean, some of it, yeah. some of it, I don't know, some people would disagree with, but I think it's it's good shit. It is definitely in the in the army the hardest training test. Yeah, that's in like earning your wings. You know, you so don't you instantly well earn your wings. What you actually earn after, com when you're after completing P Company, yeah. you earn the right to wear your maroon berry. Right. You know, your lid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it. The wings, they only get to wear once they've completed their jumps. Depot. Um, you're always checking each other over. What is that patch right there? Do you know? Kit, the, the yes, that's it. Um, I think it's 30... 16 air assault, I think it in is. Ways, and okay. at first you don't like it, but once because these boys it, are based in Aldershot, which is a massive British Army garrison, all down base, south. You know, there we go, the, the PLA, I think. That's what they call that. Mm. It's a pretty nice facility. I haven't really been in Bragg so much, but. Interoperability training is Seems really pretty solid. It looks make sure that we're ready yeah, to go. Yeah, looks good. To answer the call um, where it's to come to face any sort of emerging crisis from anywhere across the world in a short space of time. So really nice. important for them <laughs> to do these, these type is of things. Is that how they do it? Prepare for them effectively. <laughs> I don't know. It's the first time I've seen it. That's that, that tower, airborne you right there. Out, I'm not <laughs> back at Rise Norton, you jump out and you just fall to the bottom and bang out a roll. There's you've got a leap out. It then it drags you on a on a line and you have to do your count correctly. Okay. Yes, yeah, go back to um, ITC Catrick. Yeah. Um, where they're doing their people checking and canopy. also train their <laughs> infantry para tra <laughs> para soldiers. Yeah. Um obviously all the training instructors for the paras are para trained. Right. No other no other cap batches are allowed to be part of their training team. Yeah, yeah. And there were one guy, I'm not mentioning his name or anything. Okay. But it, um, he was a sniper in the palace and he had more kills than got no sword, you know what I mean? Right. And he was like one of them people, like you looked at me, you wouldn't want to fuck with him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's been there and done that, won the t shirt, you know, that type of guy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the stories you hear, it's unreal. I know, I'm sure. I mean, I've heard a lot of stuff just from the dudes who go to airborne school. They seem to, to keep everything like relatively the same. Like, I don't know when they started the airborne school, but. It was like back in 1950s, but they keep their verbiage the same, like the mentality yeah. and the attitude is the same. So I think like airborne is such a, a culture and it's probably going to stick around that like that for a while. Yeah, it's uh, it definitely is, especially in the British Army. I mean, like I said, I've never I've never had any interest in airborne. You know, I'm I'm not that type of guy. Yeah, uh, I'm happy with what I'm doing. I like being on the ground, you right. know, <laughs> feet down. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be jumping out of planes. But, um, you know, respect to him. I've seen the training uh, first time, like I've already said, and it's grueling, honestly. not A lot of people are dropping out of training because they just can't handle it. Right. Do you know? Yeah, I don't think 80 second is, is as bad, but, I mean, it, it seems kind of fun. To make I would try it. Fault, yeah. You literally pull it, and it's, I think that's as close as you can get to doing it for real. 
Okay, I thought, was, I thought it was going to like detach him or something so he could do his, his drop. US equipment mm -hmm. uh, and equally help the US members um, that we're working with and um, utilize UK kit uh, should they need to uh, on the field of battle. Gotcha. Hell yeah. What is that? Like, a, I don't even know what aircraft that is. I don't. <laughs> C-17? That's what I would guess. Before. Oh, it is C-17. It's quite a different experience. I mean, it was a massive plane. And to see that many people on it, it was a little bit mind-blowing. Those things So I took that into Israel, a C-17, and that thing is absolutely massive. It seems like it's pretty yeah. weird that it can actually fly when you actually go up and see that sucker. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, and and, and it, can definitely, imagine. it can definitely carry a lot of people in it. Uh, because it was American jumps, and I haven't jumped American since 2005 with the new kit and equipment. 2005, holy plane. shit. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> slightly nervous. <laughs> but as soon as I got on the plane, my adrenaline kicks in, the nerves go straight out the window. I've got my men behind me. I always try and make sure I my. I just first prefer plan. the US Army I'll look uh, behind me. uniform. You know, I just prefer your uniform. Yeah. And I, can see how I think the MTP are. is pretty dope, so not going to lie. You know, that's from the leadership. Over uh, when you're in there sitting um, and waiting for the green light to go on, and there's so many emotions, and um, <laughs> it's, it's just that, what he's so wearing there is the new you get, back. It um, came out a couple of years ago, I think. Okay, you, you yeah, that's what you wear under um, your body armor, basically. Different gotcha. experience. Here we go. Yeah, it does look sick, though, doesn't it? When yeah, you jump all out of planes and that. It but, looks cool. But, it looks cool, but it's just not me, myself. Yeah, I know there's a lot of waiting involved with, with jumps, too. That's kind of a weird angle. How do they get that? I'm guessing it's a drone, maybe. Yeah, it seems like they're literally just on the ground with like a really nice zoom, but I mean, I've never seen an angle like that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, I don't know, the, the whole static line thing kind of makes me nervous, too. Yeah. Have you done parachute? No, never. I am, I am. I've, I've had the offer, though, though, in the British Army, a lot of yeah. times ago, you know, uh, you know, like, a lot of times we go on adventure training and stuff in the British Army. It's really good for that, right. you know, the British Army. And uh, a couple of the times as well, they say, who fancies to go, um, you know, skydiving or something but okay. I'm, i've never had any interest in it right. but like i said uh, the, the british army is fantastic when it comes to adventure training okay like, it's like it's... for instance um completely off topic um we were stood on a parade and then my troop commander at the time said who wants to go play cricket in barbados Okay. Yeah. So no brainer. I'm like, eh, I'll go. Right. So I ended up going to Barbados to play cricket for ten days, paid who, by the army. Who are you playing against? Uh, just uh, we were just playing against Barbados schoolboys oh. and that you know different different That's clubs cool. and that cricket. Do you yeah. know cricket? Um, right, right. So we were do we're doing that, and it's the opportunities are great though in the British Army for stuff like that. That's when you, if you were want to do like um, an instructor course and say for instance kayaking right th then you can put your name forward and you get put on that it's really good it's the british army for opportunities is it like military training or is it just like civilian training that you go and do civilian okay. so you'll get a civilian qualification out of it so if you do decide That's to leave the military you'll take that with you okay so it's really good so uh, one, one of my friends here, he's a full kayak instructor because there's lots and lots of different levels to become right. you know, an instructor, like a level one, level two, level three. And right. he's like the top instructor now. And he's done it all through the army. That's dope. So it's really good. Yeah, damn. We don't get yes, to do anything I know. like that. Don't you? Oh, my mm -hmm. God. That's bad. <laughs> that's we, quite bad. There's like morale trips where you go and do like whitewater rafting and it's like a lazy river. It just, it, it sucks, really. That's pretty much it. Yeah, so... <laughs> Basically, all the adventure training packages run by different regiments are all run by military. Right. So it's all in house, if that makes sense. We don't, we don't contract civilians to come as an instructor to do, you know, to be there and train gotcha. us and whatever. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's pretty. Well, yeah, it's a bit, 
It is really good, but it's really shit for you guys, eh? <laughs> it's <laughs> whatever. To do all that. We're kind of used to it. There it is. That's the shot right there. I mean, I gotta say, if you're like an, an enemy and you see all these guys jumping out like that, it would be kind of terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I like those parachutes. I watched, uh, yeah. I watched this program about um, like a World War II documentary. Uh -huh. World War II documentary, and uh, there was this old guy talking. He was British. Yeah. And the Germans, I think it was the Germans that were invading by airborne. Okay. During daylight into the greek islands yeah and he said shooting the germans was like pigeon shooting really you pick him off one by one and that's what it was, it was. like i said it was a world war ii documentary right. so if you're looking at that now if you jump you, surely you'd have to jump a, a lot of miles away from there yeah, yeah 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 surely yeah. I don't know how they're working, like I said. We're, I don't, yeah, we're I don't airborne, know. So we don't know. I mean, I would imagine that they would do that. But then you also have, like, the Pathfinders, which go, like, even further, like, behind enemy lines to do, like, recce and yeah. stuff. So, I don't know. That'd be, that'd be cool yeah. to, to learn a little yeah, more Yeah, but with, with Pathfinders, uh, I mean, I again, I am not trained Pathfinders. So, the way they operate, those small man teams, recce. Yeah, right. So, I'm sure they'll deploy throughout the night during the dark because obviously yeah. they have to hide away in that and then you know do their do their business mm. that would be fucking that'd be an awesome job to have yeah yeah so i think those parachutes are relatively new if i'm not mistaken that type of parachute yeah it does look new i think the the others i've seen in another program were white yeah, I think that, I don't know. I, I always hear airborne people talking about the different types of parachutes that they have to jump with sometimes. Those parachute bags are a lot bigger than I thought they'd be, though. Yeah, Shit. massive. He's just jumping with a 240, too. <laughs> we had a day, we had like a competition which the Americans set up, the 8, eight second airborne. Hell yeah, we let's were see. Supposed to, you know, we were placed against an American. I mean, we're supposed to work as a team, but because of uh, okay. every reg bloke wants to finish first, it was it became a competition. Really. Nice. <laughs> yeah. There was this one, is where I am. One of us, one UK though. soldier, and one American soldier, and we had a certain number of tasks to complete. Yeah, this is yeah. definitely. I believe the Paris, the British lads outshine the Americans 100 percent yeah they probably love this shit yeah. I mean 82nd is good but they don't have like a standard they don't have like a selection like the the Paris did yeah that that's not like like I said that's not to put the Americans down at all yeah, you yeah. Know, I know they're good soldiers but I know the Paris they're like they've got the highest standard of like I already mentioned the P company yeah, yeah you have to be a certain you have to run a mile and a half in under nine minutes and stuff like that that's just, you know, basic. <laughs> yeah, as far as I'm aware, airborne units don't have, like, any special... I mean, like, with your if you're infantry, you'll have to do, like... You have to reach different standards with the new fitness test, but that's pretty yeah. much it. Airborne, as far as I know, doesn't have, like, their own tests like that. And, of course, not having a selection is going to mean a whole lot, too. Yeah. This looks like a lot of fun, though. So it looks like they're working together. Yeah. Oh, come on, but look at that American kit, man. It's so, like, loose and saggy. Okay. We got him using that for. Yeah. Obviously, there must have been trained on it before. Right. Because we don't use M4 in the British Army. It's SA-80. Right. Yeah, I wonder how they like it. It's kind of weird moving from bullpup to that. It looks lighter. Again, I appreciate uh, all the effort you guys put out this morning. Uh, it was a good time. Thanks to all the Paris for uh, coming out here and letting us slow you down. It was 
<laughs> We're doing the right thing, loving the values that we want to promote. Thank you guys very much, and for both of you guys. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Nice. Okay. I wonder what they did. So they're getting an Army Achievement Medal right now. They must have won the competition. Oh, uh, yeah, true. His partner must have shaved it so they were faster Probably before they what, went out top there. Team. <laughs> I do. I do think the legacy is is important because. You build the bonds, and the bonds have been brought back from World War II. So I think keeping uh, yeah. and building on these bonds that we have with the uh, United States. It's I love the old school footage. Second to none. I think we work yeah, quite so well. Yeah, so do I. It's massively important. It goes all the way back to World War II, where we, we, we worked together to, you know, defeat the enemy of the world. Oh, yeah. All the way up to my, my experience. Holy shit, my that's calling a calling to join the army, really, yeah. which was 9-11. Before I joined the army, I remember that happening on TV. And I'm sure, like many people in my generation, and uh, from there, from Iraq, I'm two tours off of Afghan. I've worked with the uh, with the Americans, and yeah, it's, it's just a brotherhood, and the culture will always be there for each other. That's kind of weird. I've never heard like anyone in the in the British Army joining because of of 9/11. I didn't think it was that much of an inspiration or like motivation for other people. No, uh, no, a lot of people did join. A lot of people did join because of it. It was life on you. I I, I actually uh, remember watching it. Really. You know, and uh, obviously, one thing that sticks out to me and um, is the people dropping out of the windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a true story because it was roughly. It was just after work. It was half past five or something like that. Yeah, that, uh, that makes sense. So, and then watching it on the news and it, it was because back then it was slightly different than it would be right now. I think right now they blur things out. Right. In 2000, when it happened, 9 11. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, everything, you know, you saw everything. It was awful. awful. I remember it very, very well. Yeah. So, you know. I so we were watching it on TV when it happened, but at the same time, we were right across the river and we were actually able to see the smoke and everything. Cause my, my wow. aunt, my aunt actually worked at the world trade center, but my, my mom was like freaking out. And when she found out that that happened, she thought her sister was dead and whatnot. turns out later oh, on, shit. later on, she comes back super late. Cause all the traffic was like shut down and whatnot. And she was like, Holy shit. Like you actually survived. And it's literally just because she was late. So that's yeah. how I, that's how I remember. It's kind of cool to hear from like a, a British person's perspective, though. Yeah, hmm. that's not just my own opinion, though. It, it was like for a lot of people like that because Afghan kicked off then, right. so a lot of people wanted hey guys, to go to Afghan. That's awesome from Chefs right there. Look, we got some legacy oh, yeah. right here behind us. Chefs talked about the legacy. We're going to continue to build some of that legacy today. All right, we're going to continue on the field over there. We'll play some rugby. We'll play some I like there. the trousers he's wearing. Yeah, he's got him like he's got the the shirt tucked in. I think that's an airborne thing where they don't care about that kind of stuff. So it's really important we try and parachute across these large distances, in this case, US, the US to Estonia, to confirm Oh yeah, that we okay. Can do it. I remember hearing about this, actually. US to Estonia. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. You know they'd be super groggy coming out of that thing. So I'm looking forward to jumping into Estonia. I never have jumped into an exercise with a full kit and it's going to be at night. <laughs> so when we jump oh, in and land, we have to get our bearings out and find where we have to go in the night. Yeah, hopefully For he doesn't land in a young tree. Lads to, you know, work with the Americans, go as a joint force moving across continents to then jump in at night yeah, with all your kit, not knowing where, where you're going to land, to then get ready to go do our mission and achieve it so that dude is a what like a sergeant yeah he's a sergeant and he's been in since what he said 2005 is when he first did things yeah. with the how long does it normally take to get a sergeant in the british army right it, it depends because it all depends um this x amount of different reasons to be honest mm -hmm. you can make sergeant within your first 12 years but then again, in infantry, sometimes it takes a little bit longer yeah, yeah. than it would do in another branch. Um, 
And then again, it could be like fall, you know, you might have had a fight and got a promotion ban because that's very common. Okay. If you do something seriously yeah, wrong, yeah, right. you can get a promotion ban. Uh, so fall, you know, you might have that as well. You never know. Sar so Sergeant is the, is that the fifth pay grade or like fourth? Um, so you've got private Lance Corporal, Corporal Sergeant. So it's your okay. fourth pay grade. Yeah. Dang. And that's then after crazy. that, it's Staff Sergeant. And then after that becomes warrant officer. Okay, right, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's confusing. Warrant officer is a completely different thing from us. It's not like enlisted. Yeah, with all your kit, yeah. not knowing where, where you're gonna land. To... <laughs> it looks sick, this. I good, know. Good video. Especially opening up that door. Once that uh, parachute door opens, <laughs> yeah. and he's moving towards the exit, <laughs> it will be up to him to start stitching together and fighting problems in the air on the descent, on the DZ, on his own, until he can marry up um, with his buddy, his colleagues, um, to start achieving the overall objectives of the, of the mission. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure the adrenaline is going to do a pretty good job of waking them up. Well, you're just diving into the unknown. I know, just it's into, not, into the darkness, <laughs> yeah. I think if you're airborne, you don't know any better. You just go for it. Yeah. Damn, did you see how short that jump master was? Yeah. She, she's kind of struggling to grab their, their lines there. There we go. That dawn attack or whatever they're doing. Yeah, that's sick. I, don't, I, I love it when they do all the slow motion and stuff I know. in videos. Make it look really epic. In reality, they're probably freezing because they just went from North Carolina to, to Estonia. Yeah. Hell yeah. Defender 21 is a huge exercise. There's many more aspects going on around swift response. It's not just about parachuting activity. It's about logistical support movement of uh, okay. tanks. So it's like an exercise within an exercise? Both by land, sea, and air. Yeah. So we will have troops, equipment. Estonia has been going Croatia, on for a fair Albania, few years now. Uh, yeah. Germany. And, and a whole that's host just of an exercise for us. But it's like a uh, classing as a tour series. now, pretty much, because it's so long. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I know. Isn't there like a rotational force in Estonia from the, the UK? I remember mm. seeing that in, in some sort of video. I think they have like their, their tanks and stuff. All right. Well, that's pretty yeah, cool. Dude. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Again, like not being like airborne myself, it's kind of like a lot cooler to see. I'm sure if you're airborne, you can appreciate it too. But I know the crappy stuff that yeah. goes behind the scenes if you're airborne as far as like air getting canceled or you're just waiting forever. Yeah, I don't know anything about like the palace apart from like their P company training. Right. Do you know that it's like um, that's the thing about the um, the British Army though. When you, I don't know if you like comment on other branches, you know they frown up on that a little bit. If yeah, that makes sense. You yeah, know, they're like, well, you're not training this, who are you to comment on this? And right, do you know what I mean? But I personally find it really interesting, you know, just to watch it. Now, I think if you're hating, then that's where it's going to be an issue because in the u.s army there's like a, a stigma or it's like they call it legs if you're not airborne you're like a leg which i'm totally fine with being a leg just because i'm yeah. totally fine with doing the light infantry stuff but i mean i can appreciate what what airborne is but i mean it'd just yeah. be it'd be cool to sort of see airborne stuff being used in like actual combat because people might lose their appreciation yeah. for it if they're not seeing that kind of stuff yeah but, um, like i said um the Paris, I know they call everyone a hat. You know, that's like an hat. insult to everyone else. Uh -huh. You know, you're a hat. Unless you're a para, you're a hat in the British Army. That's what the Paris say. Where does you the know? term hat come from? I think it's oh, a so you, World War II you, term. No. I, but I don't know, to be honest. So I, I was thinking, because you know. in, the, in the U.S. Army, if you're not airborne, then you'll pretty much wear a normal patrol cap, which is just like a hat. Yeah. But if you're airborne, you wear your maroon beret. But I don't. I guess it's yeah. it's different in the British Army because they always wear berets. So that's kind of weird, huh? Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> yeah, I've got no idea. It's all like you know, different colours have got different meaning in the British Army. You right. know, in regards to our berets, you know, we we just call them lids. Um, yeah. So obviously you got like, 
uh, khaki green is mainly infantry. Okay. But then you've got but then you've got a little um, like a like the rifle set where dark green. Okay. Uh, and then you've got like the palace, obviously, like I mentioned there, where maroon berries. Right. And then the like the Royal Marines wear the green ones. Uh, like us, we wear navy blue. Uh, you know, we're a reg rec regiment. Okay. Um, you know, it's it. You can kind of, if you know it, if you're in the British Army and you know about the British Army, you kind of know pretty much straight off the bat by the cap batch and the the colour of the berry. Right. If it's infantry or something else. Yeah, I've you know, seen that. You wouldn't see it. Yeah, I mean, you see that in other militaries too, but in the U.S. military, it's usually not like that. It's either if you're a green beret, you'll have a green beret. If you're a ranger, mm. you'll have a tan beret. They have the new SVAB, which mm. wears like a brown beret or some shit. I'll, I'll tell you something to confuse you a little bit. Okay. So, as a British soldier, it doesn't matter what branch you're in. You know, like for instance, me, I could go and do my P company. Right. Which then lets me, if I would pass it, you know, the Paris, mm. if I would pass that P company, uh, it's, um, it'll give me the right to wear the maroon berry. So on the last day of the course, if you passed it, they'll present you your certificate and your maroon berry. Right. And you don't have to be infantry para to to become, you know, airborne, if that makes sense. Yep. Other branches can do the selection. Uh, not selection the course. Right. Same as the Royal Marines. We're the British Army, but yet you see people with Army Commando on the on the right. You know, the, the top, all arms, top of the all arm. arms course or whatever. Yeah, it's called an all arms um, um, commandos course. Okay, right. So if I go now and do that, then I'm entitled to wear the green berry, but I'm not allowed to wear it within my unit, and that's where it's going to confuse you. Right. So okay. if. If I go to a training regiment now for a basic training where you go as a recruit to yeah. become a soldier, I'm entitled there to wear <laughs> my green lid, i.e. if I've done commandos, or my uh, P company lid. Right. Do you know, so it's a little yeah, bit yeah. confusing. Like. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. So in the U.S. Marine Corps, you can go to ranger school, and if you pass ranger school, I mean, you get your ranger tab, but you can't wear it on your uniform or anything. So it's kind of yeah. the same, I think. But, yeah, I don't know. Mm. Hmm. Okay. I mean, that's a I'd cool. I'd love to do all that. I know that's a cool video. Rangers. I'm, I can Yeah. So I went to. I didn't go to Ranger. I went to Pre Ranger, which is basically like a Ranger spin up. And then I got Rabdo, which is basically like kidney failure. <laughs> so that was it. That oh, was shit. That that was my <laughs> Ranger experience right there. But I'd like to Holy do the. Shit. I'd like to go and do the All Arms Commando course. I know they have some U.S. military go there every now and again. That'd be sweet. If you. Yeah. Enjoyed this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Really, let us know if you want to see more of these type of videos because I've had a blast talking about this stuff. It's been already a really long video. I don't want to drag <laughs> it on too long. Yeah. Um, for you guys, so we'll we'll keep it here. We'll cut it off here, and we'll see you in the next video. Have you got anything to say? Comment arms channel. No, that was fun. It was like you know, it, was, it was cool getting the the two perspectives for sure. Yeah, something we're both not trained in, so it's cool to look at. <laughs> yeah, look, look silly in front of all these people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, though.